Without objection. Uh, Mr. President, just before the uh, uh, previous Easter recess, I came to the floor to talk about a truly remarkable American, a visionary, a dreamer, an adventurer, most importantly, a young man who's devoted himself to service to others far above and beyond the call of duty. The young man's name is Matt Rutherford. He's a 31-year-old. He just turned 31 about a week ago. Uh, Ohioan, and here's what he has done in almost the last year. On June the 13th of last year, this th then 30-year-old young man got on board a 36-year-old, 27-foot-long Alban Vega sailboat. Got it? 27-foot-long. 36 years old, small sloop rig sailboat, and he set out on one of the most audacious adventures ever, ever contemplated by any sailor. He set out to circumnavigate the Americas solo and nonstop. So here's what he did. So on June 13th of last year, he left Annapolis on this small 27-foot sailboat. He sailed out of Chesapeake Bay. He sailed up around Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Labrador, all the way up by Greenland, all by himself, and then sailed the Northwest Passage all the way through the Northwest Passage here. Uh, He's been certified, I think, uh, if, I, if I remember right, he has been certified um, by the Scott Polar Institute in Cambridge, England, has recognized Matt as the first person in recorded history to make it through the fabled Northwest Passage alone and nonstop in such a small sailboat. So he came through the Northwest Passage, rounded Alaska, went from Alaska all the way down to Cape Horn. And again, if you know anything about the treacherous waters of Cape Horn, you know that someone in a small 27-foot boat probably doesn't have much chance of making it. But he did it. Went around Cape Horn, all the way up the coast of South America, up to the Caribbean. And today, as I stand here and speak, he is just outside of the mouth of Chesapeake Bay, off the uh, coast of Virginia, uh, the North Carolina-Virginia border, and is going to make landfall this Saturday in Annapolis, 313 days after he started. Solo, nonstop, never touched land. This is one of the most historic adventures ever, ever undertaken by a human being, solo, nonstop, around the Americas, 313 days, in treacherous, treacherous waters. He has not set foot on dry land for the entire journey. He has not stopped. I've had the privilege of talking to Matt. I've never met the young man, not yet, but I've had the privilege of talking with him on his satellite phone a couple of times just last week. Uh, when he said to me that it'd probably be the last phone call he'd make because he's, all of his equipment has now started to fail, he said, it's like the boat is talking to me and he knows the journey's almost over. His solar panels have died, his wind generator's gone, his engine doesn't work, he's out of power, he's only under sail, he has no engine any longer. He says, when big waves hit, the boat creaks and groans. And he says he's just about to make it into the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. What a tremendous, tremendous adventure. Right now, he's about 15 miles off of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. And so 313 days after he began, he will make landfall this Saturday 
at the National Sailing Hall of Fame dock in Annapolis, Maryland. First time he set foot on dry land in 313 days. So Mr. President, I am in awe of Matt's courage, his character, his audacity to do this. He is in a class, in a class with a tiny, tiny group of explorers and venturers, pathbreakers who have defied odds to accomplish great things. I think of Joshua Slocum, the first person to sail single-handedly around the world. It took him three years, covered 46,000 miles. He made many stops, but he did it between 1895 and 1898. The first known solo circumnavigation of the globe. I think of Sir Francis Chichester, who sailed his yawl, the Gypsy Moth 4, from Plymouth, England in 1966 the first person to achieve a true circumnavigation of the world solo from west to east via the Great Capes. He did so in 226 stops, uh, 226 days with one stop in Australia. I think of Dick Rutan and Jana Yeager and their Voyager aircraft, which is now hanging down in the Smithsonian in 1986, the first to fly around the world nonstop without refueling. I think of the extraordinary feats of physical endurance and courage of Robert Perry in 1909, the first person to reach the North Pole. Roald Amundsen in 1911, the first person to reach the South Pole. Sir Edmund Hillary, the first person to climb Mount Everest, 1953. So Mr. President, Matt Rutherford now finds himself in this very exclusive company and club of audacious adventures. However, I would say that Matt Rutherford has, in important ways, surpassed the feats of, say, Slocum and Chichester, because Slocum and Chichester made stops during their voyages. Matt is accomplishing this solo, nonstop, on a small 36-year-old boat, 27 feet long, best suited for weekend sailors who don't want to venture outside of Chesapeake Bay. As I said, the Scott Polar Institute in England has, all, has already recognized him as the first person in recorded history to solo make this sail through the Northwest Passage in a small sailboat. But here, again, is where Matt is in a class by himself. Why is he doing it? Yes, he's going to set a very fantastic record. It's never been done before. But he's doing it to raise money for the Chesapeake Region Accessible Boating, CRAB for short. It's an Annapolis-based organization to provide sailing opportunities for physically or developmentally disabled persons. Well, you can see now why I'm so interested in this as the lead sponsor of the Americans with Disabilities Act. I'm deeply impressed by the fact that Matt has undertaken this historic voyage in a cause larger than himself to make it possible for more people with disabilities to have the opportunity to experience and enjoy boating and sailing. One of the fundamental goals of the Americans with Disabilities Act is that people with disabilities should be able to participate fully in all aspects of society, and that includes recreational opportunities like sailing, which can be exhilarating and empowering for children and adults with a wide range of disabilities. So, Mr. President, I salute Matt for his courage. He's almost home. He'll be here this Saturday. Here's a young man sitting on his boat. I assume that picture was taken when he was up in the Northwest Passage because he looks pretty cold. Uh, but a young man with uh, extreme courage. What an audacious undertaking. People advised him no, that he could never do it. Uh, that the odds of him surviving were very small through all these treacherous waters, but he decided to do it nonetheless and is setting a tremendous record. So I salute him for wanting to share his love of sailing with the disability community, for using his adventure to raise awareness and expand access to sailing for Americans with disabilities. I say to all, if you want to learn more about Matt and the mission, 
You can go to his website. It's very easy to remember. It's just solotheamericas.org. www.solotheamericas.org. And you can go back and follow him through this entire journey around the Americas, solotheamericas.org. So I applaud, Matt, I applaud Matt Rutherford for his vision and spirit. I wish him safe passage during this final leg of his epic journey. I hope to have the honor of meeting and thanking him upon his return. Matt Rutherford is one of those remarkable human beings who dream big, driven by big challenges, who refuse to accept the limits and boundaries that so-called reasonable people readily acknowledge, who puts aside fear in order to accomplish great and good things, not just for himself, but for others. That is Matt Rutherford. I, again, applaud him for his courage and for just sticking with it through all of that. It is one of the great feats of ocean sailing that has taken place in the entire history of, of sailing the, the great oceans. So he'll be back this Saturday. And uh, as I said, uh, we hope that he has fair winds in the following sea for the next uh, four or five days. Mr. President, with that, um, uh, I will yield the floor in a minute, but Mr. President, I asked uh, to uh, put a statement in the record on Arts Advocacy Day, which is April the 16th of this year. Uh, we, our help committee recently had a hearing uh, on education uh, in the economy, and quite frankly, uh, one of the things that came out was that we need to produce more graduates who are creative and collaborative. And that means we need to value the arts in our society and teach it in our schools. So today is Arts Advocacy Day. Advocates for the arts have come to Washington to remind their elected officials about the importance of federal investment in the arts. And so, Mr. President, I would ask the remainder of my statement be made a part of the record. Without objection. I yield the floor.